got diagnosed with depression when I was 90 um, and then I lost my nan to cancer and so of course that really kicked it in big mm. time um, moved up to Yorkshire to get away from everything and that's where I finally managed to get the help speaking to mind in Yorkshire and um, the counsellor who I was seeing had suffered depression himself and he said to me if you'll get to a stage where you realise you've just got to move on and make the best of what you've got and um, when I moved down from Yorkshire back down to Poole and I got diagnosed with conditions with HS. And what is that? What happens? It's a condition that causes boils or abscess to form all over your body, so under your arms, under your breasts, on your stomach, on your crutch, on your bottom. <laughs> so some days I can't walk, other days mm. I can't lift properly. Um, it just depends on how bad it is, is you know, what you're limited to doing. A lot of people who have HS tend to suffer from depression because you're in pain. With HS there's no routine to when it's going to come. Some people think it's hormonal, others say it's because you're overweight. And because there isn't a set pattern, it causes that depression sometimes because some days you can have three or four all at once and other times you can just have the one. So your pain levels up and down and that tends to cause you to be a bit down depending on how bad it is. Mm. And so a lot of people with the HS tend to suffer from the depression as well. Mm. Um, but I suppose it was the kick I needed to make me realise that life's too short. If, I, if it fails, at least I can say I've tried. Whereas yes. if I don't try, you end up going, if only or I wish. So it was your dream to have a kind of bookshop and tea room? Though. Always wanted a bookshop. Yeah. Always. I think that's what got me through the depression a lot of it, is being able to go somewhere different when you're reading a book. <laughs> you go oh, into a yes. different world. Yes. So sort of escape somewhere. Yeah, I suppose it is. It's a form of escaping from what you're used to to somewhere, depending on what you're reading, is where you want to go. So it just made it easier to cope. Mm. And then I thought, if I can help other people with either depression or the HS or whatever condition comes along next, mm. then we'll do it. You know, a lot of people tend to use the books as a coping mechanism nowadays because you get speaking to people and they're like, oh yeah I've suffered with depression or I've got depression but I love reading my books and there seems to be a pattern going <laughs> it's only when I got diagnosed diagnosed with borderline schizophrenia and borderline personality disorder that I finally went right enough that's not true <laughs> I'm not that bad <laughs> and done something about it so. and that something about it was actually starting the bookshop yeah, if you start in the bookshop, you don't have time to be depressed when you're mm. talking to people you don't, complete strangers, and you're trying to make the place feel warm and welcoming and everything else. So you don't have time to think about anything else about, except for what you're doing. Mm. And it, in a way, it gets you through as well, because I know when the HS is bad, um, you know you're coming into work and you're going to meet the nicest people, and it's your job, so you can work it around how you're feeling at the time yes yeah you've got three children to think about don't you as well yes so you can't really just kind of please yourself can you no you can't it's hard work trying to squeeze them in mm. but <laughs> no they love it as well it's a family business and it's nice that mm. they can help out you know even the six-year-old will join in but really this is one of the happiest places i have come to and yet you know, because with the tea room and everything, and it's so warm. It is so warm and welcoming, and even the toilet's full of quotes and <laughs> things written all over the wall. I mean, it's fabulous. I just, I, you know, hats off to you for really turning everything around. I think you get to that point where you have to. Mm. You have to do something about it, and you, you either go one way or the other. Mm. I'm just too stubborn to go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. know if it's stubbornness. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I've no, seen I just you don't believe in giving up. So. No, and I've seen you on days when it, you've obviously been in a lot of pain, but you're still there baking cakes by the dozen. And yes, I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> no, now with the arthritis it's even harder, but we're trying you, to find ways around it. Because you have rheumatoid arthritis as well. Oh, yeah. That's a recent thing, isn't it? I've had it for about three months, so but they say it comes in threes, don't they? Mm -hmm. So there's my three. <laughs> What about the depression? How is that now? It's all right. I still have my bad day now and again. But a lot of it I tend to control with the self-help, which I got taught by the counsellor, who was lovely. So things like make your targets for the day easily accessible, not try and put some of it on there that you know you're not going to reach. Right. 
but because you've reached the targets you've set you feel better about yourself because you've managed to do it yes so, but I tend to live by those rules <laughs> anything else think of the positive try and focus on the positive things in life because there's always something and there's always someone worse off than you mm. and you see that when you're working in this place you know yes. you'll see the disabled people coming in and you think I'm not that bad yet you know there's always someone worse off than you are and I tend to keep that in my head yeah. how easy is it to find something positive when you're feeling really awful not always easy how do you do it the husband helps me <laughs> he'll go come on Faye you've got your business you've got everything you've always wanted in the business you know look at that side of it or the six year old will come up and just go I love you mum mm. you know and it's sometimes smart. that's enough just to go oh actually yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know the kids help keep you going and also yeah. that contact with people, like you say, with being here, yeah. working. There's you people in and out all the time. There so. is, and you can't be miserable, mm. you know, because your customer doesn't want to come in and see somebody with a face like a wet kipper behind the counter. <laughs> you know, they want to see somebody smiling and happy. So where you tend to think, right, well, I've got to do this, that tends to make it that little bit easier sometimes mm. to help you do it. You know, whereas if you're sat at home and you've got nothing to do, it's easier to be that bit, a bit downer, if you know so what I mean. Dwell on it. Mm. Yeah. What other techniques were you given to help you through, or do you use to help you through? Um, I tend to get it through my system, in the sense of you sit there, you think about it, and then you think, right, well, for example, with the arthritis on top of the HS, I said to my husband, I said, well, if I get both at once, I'm stuffed. But then I thought, well, actually, no. You get down for a few days and you think, right, how do I get around it? And so you start trying to adjust things to fit the new lifestyle. I think that's fantastic. What advice would you give to anybody who is going through a really rough time? Keep your chin up, there's always light at the end of it. Mm. Mm. Always is. You can always make things better. You just you'll get to that stage where you you have a choice and you suddenly realise that I can move on and there is things that I can do mm. to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> it's just when you're actually in it, it's hard to see that. I think. It is very hard. Even some days now, I still sit there and think, oh, what have I done? And then other days, you look up, you walk in, and you think, I've done a lot. <laughs> you have. But then it's other days, you can't see it, you know. Mm. So, but yeah, I think it was worth it. So. Definitely. <laughs> yes, I always think this is the happiest shop on the street. It's got such a wonderful atmosphere and everything. Yeah. It's quite funny though, because not purposely, but all the staff that we now have all suffer from depression. <laughs> so it's the cheerfulest place, but we're all depressed. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's that's